Hello everyone and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to edit a low-key, high-contrast black and white photo. So we'll be getting this photo here from this photo here. So let's hop in here and get started. Okay, let's take the photo that we're going to be editing and open it into the develop module. Okay, if you watched any of my other tutorials, you know I turn on my lens corrections first. As you can see, my Sigma 18 to 35 art lens was detected. Okay, now I'm not going to bother with uh, turning on any kind of remove chromatic aberration since we'll be converting this over to black and white. Now I already have my white balance set, and adjusting the white balance is also important even when you're doing a black and white photo. Now, like I said, this is going to be black and white, so since I've got that already done, I'm going to go ahead and click on black and white and let it automatically convert a lot of things over. Okay, now when we go down here to the black and white area, as you can see, it already did my auto mix. Now, this is pretty close to the way I want it, but I'm going to do a few little adjustments. Now, I'll bring my red up here, about a plus 24. As you can see, that really lightens up a lot around the lips and stuff. About a plus, I said around 24, 25 is pretty close. Okay, let me check the rest of these. I think yellow I did bring down just a little bit. Okay. And that looks pretty close to what I had before. Okay, now I can go back up here and get started on the rest of it. Now, like I said, it is a high contrast, so I will be bumping my contrast up. Let's say about a plus 45 here. About plus 46 close enough. And that's really helping a lot. Also darken around that background and brighten her face and everything up really nice. Okay, now let's go over here to my highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Now I'm gonna bring up my highlights here to plus 11. Now keep in mind the highlights is also what controls the lighting on the face. So then I'm gonna bring up about a plus 11 plus. It's very touchy right there. Now I want you to pay attention right here uh, to the histogram at the top. And I'll zoom in right quick. As you notice when I use the highlights here, the little screen lights up in this area right here. And it's very important, at least the way I edit things, that we get the history pulled up right to the edge here. Any more than that, it starts to really break out. Now you notice that we've got a little bit did break out right here. That's fine. It isn't really broke out over uh, too much. But the way I like to keep my photos, I like to keep them without being too excessively bright. So you don't want to get up in here too much, but right here is great, especially when you're trying to get the skin tones just right. At least that's the way I like to do things anyway. Each to their own. <laughs> now I'm going to drop my shadows just a little bit right here. About a negative 10 or 11 as well. And yeah, negative 10 will work. Now the whites I'm going to bring up just a little bit. About a plus 5 is good. And the blacks, I think I'm going to bring the blacks down to about negative 15, 16, and negative 16. And you can see I start darkening everything really nice. And we can check and see what's darkened in by clicking on the little black uh, breakout area right there. And you can see you got a lot of things that did uh, darken in quite nice. And that's really important because we want those areas where it's not on the face to be as dark as possible. That way, when you go to print it, you're not having any kind of areas that show up a little brighter than they should be. So I want the background as dark as possible. We'll come back to that when we start doing some local adjustments. Okay. Now let's get that done. I want to drop the clarity. I like dropping my clarity on my portrait photos. I think I dropped it by negative 20 on this one. Negative 19, negative 22 is close enough. You can see that nice smoothing up the skin really nice. Okay, let's go down here to our sharpening and stuff. Now I am going to pop the sharpening up really high on this one. I know 
normally I mention a lot of times I don't like using this artificial sharpening and the reason I'm going to use it here is to bring out more of the detail that you'll find in a black and white photo so that's the reason I'm using the sharpening here and I'm going to put about a 70 it's not really that much and a plus six nines close enough and it's really going to sharpen a lot I hit my option key which And we'll hit the mask here, option key, and mask it out. Now I'm going to keep it on the face as much as possible, probably around a negative, not negative, but around a 56. Yeah, that keeps it off the background, puts a lot of it around the eyes, a little bit on the hair, and the hand and stuff. You know, just where I want it. And the noise I'm going to pull up, about, about a, say, 16, 17. Pretty much close enough. Anything between 15 and 20 should be ideal for this black and white photo. No need to even mess with color since uh, noise reduction because this is a black and white photo. Okay, let's go down here and do a little bit of post crop veneting. Pull up about negative 25. Now darken around in some more. You can see it did darken in a lot. Okay. Once we got that done, now it's all about some local adjustments. Everything that's on point in is all local. So let's go up here and grab our brush tool. Now I am going to turn on the little uh, breakout thing here for the blacks. You can see everywhere it's broke out is that is completely black is blue. So I'm going to drop do a little burning here. At the, all it basically is I'm dropping my exposure. I kind of brush in right here some just to make sure everything that is black over there that should be black is staying black yeah yeah that's good enough on that one and let's click new let's turn that off now no need for that that way we know everything on this edge of the photo is completely black when it prints okay now we're gonna do a little skin softening. Go down here and find soften skin. This is a tool, a little preset that does come automatically in Lightroom. Now I've got mine a uh, negative 100 on the clarity, sharpness and additional 25, which is all this really is. Now if you wonder what the settings I've got on my brushes, the brush settings I'm actually using is a feather of 100. Size varies depending on what I'm using it on. And a flow of 75 to 77. It's still on 77. That's just where it's been, you know, fell. And a density of 75. But normally about 75, 75 is normally why I keep these. And have auto mask turned off. So let's go ahead here and just start on the forehead here. Just kind of smooth up a few areas. Especially where they're leaving kind of hairs hitting the skin. Let's pull this down through here. Now that chin when we get those hairs on it a little bit right there kind of smoothing up and get rid of the make them so obvious on the nose a little bit right here cheeks just a little bit now I like using this right here the soften skin because it will soften it without losing any detail so uh, all the things really doing is really playing with the way the light is falling onto the skin. That's the reason I like using it a lot. It's smoothing it up, no loss in detail like a lot of those programs you see out there on the uh, internet. <laughs> Not gonna name any of them. That way they don't can't sue me for slander, but there's quite a few of those programs out there I just totally hate that really make a portrait look very unpro. Okay, now we got that one done. Let's do a little bit of clarity. Let's click new again. Go up here and find our clarity tool. Now mine's on 50 right now. Let's go ahead and pull that up about 100. Now I'll just zoom in right here. All the clarity tool is is just clarity. What a 100. That's what I want to use on the eyebrows here. And a little bit on the eyelashes. Just kind of like a little bit darker. Zoom in a little bit here. Yeah, we go. You can 
can see what it's doing to those eyelashes. Make them really stand out right there. I'm going to add a ring of those eyes. We always hit the Alt key or the Option key in case we get a little bit on an area that doesn't look too right. Right here, it looks pretty good. Okay. Now let's click on New again. Let's go to my Eye White tool. Now let me zoom in one more time so you can see the Eye White tool. Now all the Eye White tool really is. Uh, actually, I'm gonna get an additional one here. Eye White. About one stop here. This one I use for black and white photos. It's essentially an exposure boost and a saturation uh, reduction. I remove completely all the saturation and I bump the exposure up a little bit. This really helps with eyeballs and stuff. You know, kind of remove any kind of red uh, redness. You can see it's looking quite nice. Brighten that eyeball really nice, make it look really healthy. There we go. I think that looks really, really nice. Yeah. Let's click new again. Now I'm going to go to another tool I got and actually go to the circular filter. And this is Iris Enhance. Let me see here. Iris Enhance. Now I'm going to go to the second one I got here. It's a different Iris Enhance. This nice it gives me an exposure of boost uh, of 1.5, one and a half stops. And actually add back a uh, saturation of 40, a little bit of uh, plus 10 in the clarity. I'll zoom in right quick so people can see that one. I can see 1.5 on the exposure, 10 on the clarity, 40 on the saturation. And of course, you can always change the eye color if you wanted to right here. But since it's black and white, I'm going to use no color effect. Okay. So we can zoom back out. Get that saturated in. We could right click and go to duplicate. Of course, once we've done that, we'll just drag it over. And drop the second one right there. Get twisted if we need to. Now before I forget, I'll have to put the feather on these about 50. I almost forgot on that first one. I had to go back and edit it. Yeah, put the feather on 50 on that one also. 51's close enough. And click done. And let's see if I can zoom out. And voila, we're done with the photo. And that's how I edited low key, black and white, high contrast photo. I know that's a mouthful, but these are some really nice photos. I really like editing my black and white photos this way, especially when it comes to portraits or even some kind of architecture. Of course, the architecture just adjusts the clarity on the main to get the effect you want. But for portraits, this is the way I like to do those black and white ones. And anyway, that's it for this tutorial. Do a quick before and after for you. Okay, well, that's it for this tutorial one. I hope you like this tutorial. If you uh, like this tutorial, how about a thumbs up? Thumbs up is always highly appreciated. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, be sure to subscribe. Subscribing is free, it's for you, and let you know when I release more videos. Until next time, everyone, thank you for watching.